Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we're going to work on our pull strength, our lats, our upper back and our biceps. So straight away we're going to start with the greatest stretch as usual. Five repetitions on each side dedicating this particular two minutes every day pre-workout to ensure entire body's mobility is ready for our workouts. One of my favorite things to do pre-workout is also to imagine myself going through all the ranges of movement through the exercise of the movement of the exercises which I'm going to do. It really helps me build up to those exercises and makes my job a little bit more easy in terms of doing the setup. So I would definitely recommend people doing that more often. And here I'm finishing off with my deep squat for the day. Now for the warm-up, before I start with my exercises, I chose to do the Y races on an inclined bench to get my entire back properly fired up. Just a couple of low weight dumbbells, 2 kilos, 1 kilo, anything is absolutely fine. What you have to particularly need to do is make sure the inclination is not too low or not too high. Just about 45 degrees should be fine enough. Two sets of these with 15 repetitions, slow and steady movement, controlled range of movement should definitely help you feel your entire back firing up, especially your erector muscles, which are just beside your spinal cord, really working hard to stabilize your hands here. A great exercise to start off with. Now for my first exercise, I decided to go with chest supported dumbbell rows using the inclined bench again here and trying to pull heavy dumbbells towards my hips try to get 10 repetitions out of each and every set i have done five sets of these now for the first set it was difficult for me to get those dumbbells up so if you choose to go with heavy dumbbells the setup would take some time because of the way you need to mount yourself onto this bench at an inclined angle make sure you Pull the dumbbells towards your hips may, uh, and not you know, flex your bicep much. Actually, if you try to pull the uh, dumbbells as much as possible towards your hips, you wouldn't be causing any kind of bicep activation or at least not much of bicep activation because your elbows will always be flaring out. This would give a lot of lat activation for every repetition. And also allow the dumbbell to travel a little bit forward. This would give you that extra bit of stretch. Post completing my chest supported rows, I moved on to lat pullovers. The setup is pretty simple. If you don't have a lat pullover machine like I don't in my particular gym, just set up an inclined bench in front of a cable machine and with a straight rod, start pulling the cable over your head basically creating a stretch in your lat and then pulling it down to create the contraction movement. One of the most important things you have to keep in mind here is to keep your elbows locked. By locked, I don't mean absolutely straight or, you know, a little bit of bend. Just decide a space wherein you're comfortable with and just keep them locked in position. You might feel a little bit of tricep activation because the way the lat stretches out and comes down and the range of movement of your arm would activate your tricep a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. Focus on getting that contraction and stretch in your lats. Your lats are the ones which help you raise your arm up above your head and bring it back down. So this particular range of movement helps you strengthen that, that range. It also lots, uh, gives you a lot of good amount of contractions and pump to your upper lats and your mid lats. The rest in between sets is 60 seconds. That should be sufficient enough for four sets. Make sure you get those 12 repetitions in. Choose a challenging weight because here is one of this. Uh, this is one of those exercises wherein you would be a little bit stronger than you would expect yourself to be. So choose a challenging weight. If you feel the first few reps are very easy, immediately switch to a higher weight and then try pulling it down. Post completing my lat pullovers, I moved into 
my bicep work wherein I started off with waiter curls. Now I have done 5 sets of these 10 repetitions. The reason I prefer this particular curls is because it kind of eliminates all my forearm involvement. Yes, of course, we will be holding onto the dumbbell with both our arms. So it, we should be focusing on how we are going to pull the dumbbell up with both our hands equally working. But otherwise, an excellent exercise to help improve your bicep peak. As you can see in the video, how my bicep contracts with every repetition, maximum amount of contraction. And I make sure that I squeeze as much as possible once the bicep reaches or sorry, the dumbbell reaches my chest and let it go all the way down. The important part is to hold the dumbbell in such a manner that your forearm doesn't get activated much. So you're basically resting the dumbbell on your palms and as the dumbbell comes up, your wrists slowly turn a little bit outwards, completely eliminating the involvement of your forearms while doing this particular curl. Post completing my waiter curls, I moved on to my hammer curls. This time I chose to do it with a cable. I just wanted to see the amount of activation I'm going to get using a cable. So attached a rope attachment to it and started getting uh, and started doing four to four sets of these with 12, uh, 12 repetitions, about 45 seconds rest in between. By now your biceps would be entirely full of blood and would be really troublesome to get the contractions peak contractions out of them that's absolutely fine that's the amount of work we want to get it done but it felt good i would still choose across the body curls over these because i think i get maximum amount of uh, connection with my bicep especially my forearms in that particular exercise but these are no less post completing my bicep work I chose to do a little bit of core work with crunches, lying down on a bench, flat bench. Two sets of these, 12 repetitions. As mentioned last time, the most important part of the crunch is not to completely get up, but make sure you breathe in as you're lying down and breathe out as you're about to crunch and squeeze your abdominal as strong as possible. You don't have to get up completely. Getting up completely activates your hip muscles a lot more than your abdominal muscles. So try to focus a lot on getting that half crunch. You would still get an amazing amount of contractions in your abdomen. Breathing is quite vital in this exercise because you have to breathe out as you crunch to get maximum squeeze of your abs. Post completing this exercise, I moved on to my static stretches. Yes, we are done with our exercises. For static stretches, I'm doing the regular hold and shift your body weight on one side at a time for my lats make sure that you hold these static stretches for 20 seconds at least more than 30 seconds is absolutely not necessary and less than that wouldn't less than 20 seconds or less than 10 seconds wouldn't be quite effective i think 15 to 20 seconds is a sweet spot for static stretches i do hope that this workout was effective it is quite precise and works on most of the muscles which we want to work on, in, especially when considering our pull strength. If you did, I would definitely request you to drop a like on the video. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate a sub. And if you have any kind of feedback, please drop it in the comments. I would definitely reply to each and every one of them. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this workout worked well for you and i'll see you in the next video where we'll going to work on our leg strength again thank you have a good day see you in your next video